Hi, I'm Jackie. I've been teaching yoga for 26 years. I've taught over 10,000 classes now. And since COVID, I also do a couple on Zoom. This is a recording of one of my 60-minute Zoom classes. It's for um, releasing tension in every joint of your body. So if you're over 40, it's particularly good. The older you get, the more you'll get out of this class. And um, it's, it's just lots of mobilizing and releasing. So it's not for strength, although if your body is more relaxed, you actually, if your muscles are more relaxed, you actually are stronger in life. If your mind is more calm and relaxed, you're more resilient at coping with stress and, and uh, <laughs> challenges in life. I hope you can put the time in. Self-care equals health care. And mentally and physically, it'll be well worth the time spent because the echo of the practice will last for at least the next 24 hours, if not 48 hours. Uh, I've got two cameras, two, I marked up twice. I've got two cameras on me. Uh, if it all goes well, I'll whack this on this class on YouTube. <laughs> Um, I think it's going to be a good class, so um, I'll try to be a little bit formal <laughs> for YouTube, but I like to just be casual anyway. But we're starting standing with good posture, awareness in our body, scanning, feeling into the feet, up through the knees, feeling into your hips, your pelvis, pelvic floors. Just feel you can breathe into your pelvic floor. Your belly is relaxed. We're not lifting your weight right now. Feeling into your rib cage, your shoulders, your arms hanging a little bit. Wriggle the fingers. Get play around with the right place for the heavy head, where the neck is as relaxed as it can be. And you can kind of sense the connections, the channels through the top of the spine into the brain stem. You can feel you're getting alignment through there into the crown of the head. And your breath is conscious and steady and manly in and out through the nose. Face soft. And we're going to work on every joint, every joint from the toes to the eyeballs, <laughs> to the fingertips. So joint mobilizations, oiling up, particularly good class for over 40s, which is all of us. So you might use the wall or you might try to balance the one leg, curl the toes, start at the feet, spread the toes, curl the toes. And if you like, you're on um, silence, you could put your favorite relaxing music on or classical music if you want, that might be good for you. Sp um, spread the toes, curl the toes. Let's do the other foot. Spread the toes as wide as you can get them and curl the toes. Spread, contract. Stre stretch the toes, spread, straighten, and then contract, curl them under. Okay, let's do rotation of one foot and we're working on balance here. You can have the wall near you if you need and then the other foot and then we're doing, oh, sorry, the other direction I meant to say. The other foot now, <laughs> one way, then the other way. Getting into the knees, bend, straighten, bend, straighten, bend, straighten. We'll take lots of time in this class to get into the joints. We'll be doing a bit of standing, then we'll do a lot of floor work and some stretching and mobilizing. And then the other knee, straighten, bend. Keeping that reach to the crown of the head, relax shoulders, neck, face. Okay, we're going to go into hips rotating like this one way, both hips together first and then one at a time. 
You can have your hands on your hips. You can have your hands wherever you, wherever you want your hands. Hands in prayer might be quite nice. And then back the other way. I quite like the hands on the hips for this one. And then do a figure of eight. You can feel it's not just the hips, the ankles, the knees, it's the lower back. And then you reverse the direction of the figure of eight. And then coming into one hip on its own and feel free to use the wall or a chair for balance. And if, it's, if there's pain, just do a smaller range of movement. And you can go always slower and a smaller range is better for easier for some people. Some of you can go faster in the bigger range of movement back the other direction. That's good because it's strengthening as well as loosening around the hip joint at the same time. Other hip. It's a great one, this one. And then the other direction. Okay, good. And then we're just going to go into our simulating blood flow against the ankles, knees and hips. Inhale and the shoulders. Exhale. Bend the knees. Inhale. Heels up. Arms pull down and back. Arms pull forward and up. Eyes are steady. Try to look out the window now so you're not looking at the screen anymore. You're finding a cloud or a plant in the distance. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice I keep looking down a lot because I'm looking at my Zoom students who are right now live in my yoga class. <laughs> I know that's a bit weird for the Zoom, <laughs> the Zoom students. But um, this, this might be watched by people all over, anywhere in the world. And over and over, they might do this. I get people contact me on comment like, Hi, I'm from Arizona and I just, my hips feel better after your yoga video. <laughs> so it's good. It's great. Okay, everyone. We're going to get into the spine flexion extension. This actually would be particularly good in the morning, this, this video, because that's when us over 40s, the joints are just a bit stiffer in the morning as you get older especially colder mornings. We don't need it as much in the afternoon, except the, the discs need it, need it more in the afternoon, not the muscles, but the discs are a little bit thinner. So this is really good for disc hydration. Shoulders turn in and out, spinal flexion, spinal extension. And then we're gonna go into if you have a neck injury, if you have a neck tension or shoulder injury, you can just do, this is lateral flexion, but you can do elbow coming up, you can do hand reaching up, we can just do arms beside you, make sure you're not arching into it. I see tall people do this a lot. So keep your core switched on so you're not doing that. So you're trying to balance the ribcage over pelvis, and just keep your lower back safe. Touch the ceiling, touch the ceiling. One hand reaching up to the ceiling, one hand trying to touch the floor, one other hand trying to touch the ceiling. And you really do get that release, that side to side. But you could just do it like this. Okay, going into rotation. Touch that wall, touch that wall, touch that wall over there, that, that wall over there. <laughs> Just bend the knees a bit and try to play with the arms going down a bit, straight across, up and across. See how you're targeting your thoracic spine, different spots in your spine. Get into the, all the 
little nooks and crannies of the all the joints. Okay, and now draw a figure of eight with your hands. So imagine you're actually holding a ball and you're, ma and you're making a figure of eight, a golden ball, <laughs> back the other direction. Or a silver ball or any color, glowing. Okay, and now do a random direction. Now, I call it weird hippie dance. Spiraling, flexing, extending, bending to the side, twisting. Okay, through the shoulders on their own like this. How's that weight in the feet? Back the other direction with those elbows. Just do the elbows, just bend and straighten. And then just do, do that with your elbows. Do that with your elbows. Bend and straighten with the arms behind you. And then do that. Push out, in, out. Up and down. Shoulders and elbow joints there. Okay, let's go into wrists. Rotate one way. You can try a gentle fist. Back the other way. And then we'll do, just open your fingers. Rotate one way. The other way. You can feel all that blood flow being stimulated with these exercises. And then fingers, squeeze and spread. My toes have started to go a bit too. Spread the toes and push the, try to pick up the yoga mat or pick up the carpet with your feet. And a neck will do side to side, lateral flexion. Just go a little bit slowly and gently with your neck. The necks can be a bit tricky with a bit of blockage as we get older. So the vagus nerve can get sometimes a bit blocked and a bit of dizziness. So just accepting that, but we are trying to keep working on freeing up. And we'll do a little bit of rotation as slow as you like. Look one way, the other way. Try to not turn your shoulders. Let's just isolate the neck. And then we'll do extension and flexion. A few rolls. And then we'll do retraction like this. Keep your eyes horizontal gaze, look straight ahead and just pull your ears back. Make a double chin, release. Make a double chin, release. Just make it a tiny movement, not a big movement. It's not like that. It's just the head. It's quite hard. You need to practice that one a bit. It's a really, really good one to open up that atlocipital joint at the top of the spine. So good for cerebral spinal fluid to the crown of the head, which is anti-aging medicine for the brain. Really simple stuff, but so good for you. And then this one I can't do, but... A side to side one is you need, you know, us Australians, <laughs> Europeans, we're kind of a bit stiff, but if we're Indian, we could do it probably quite well. But you don't need to be good at it to get the benefits. Okay, okay, now we're just doing a bit of a, just a bit of a shake. And take these microphones off for a sec because they'll bang around. So just a bit of a shaking, maybe a bit of jumping, shaking, like you're trying to get something off your foot, something off your hand. There's 
loose as it's shaking as much as it can. It's incredibly good for stimulating blood flow on fluid and relaxing tension in a really nice gentle way because the muscles can really get sticky and the tendons just around the joints just gripping. Okay, we're going to come back to just standing with good posture and feeling into our body, our joints, our cells, from the feet up to the crown of the head, to the fingertips, to the skin, to the bones, and all the hundreds and over 100,000 kilometres of blood vessels. We can feel the heart. Okay, so we're going to come down to the floor and just lie on your back. Um, start in constructive rest pose. Just lying on your back. We're going to do the pelvic floor exercises and then we'll go back into our joint mobility. Just feel your pelvic floors breathing, your belly, your ch chest floor, your diaphragm. And then we're going to squeeze our pelvic floor muscles gently and then relax. Inhale into the pelvic floors, nice and relaxed. And exhale, gently contract or lift or engage. So there's one of the pelvic floors attaches to the pubic bone at the front, the tower bone at the back, and that's deeper into the center of the body. And the other one's the right sit bone over to the left sit bone. So like two hammock shaped muscles. Just squeeze up and then release. And now we'll do some quick, not with the breath, just squeeze and release, squeeze and release the pelvic floors. Usually called the Kegel exercises after some male doctor. <laughs> somebody kegel <clears throat> and then we'll do a hold relax first pelvic floors and then squeeze and lift and hold 10 9 keep the face relaxed shoulders neck 8 gently hold the pelvic floors 3 4 3 2 1 relax and if you couldn't feel the relax maybe they're not, not strong enough to hold for 10 which is not a good sign you might need to go to a physio and get things checked out. Okay, so we're going back to joint mobility and then we'll do a few stretches. So we're going to hug in our right knee into our chest and then we'll curl and spread the toes and then we'll rotate the ankle one way. And then the other way. Make sure your shoulders are down, your face is soft. And then hug the knee in a bit closer, jiggle around a little bit to get a bit more flexion to that hip without any force. So we're going to hug in our left knee and spread the toes and Curl the toes. And then rotate the left ankle one way. Then the other way. And then hug the knee and a bit jiggle around a little bit. The left knee into the chest. Final exhalation. Put your right foot in the air. Point and flex a few times. Try not to get too stiff there because your walking will be stiffer. If your toes are stiffer and your ankles are stiffer, of course, your walking will be a bit stiffer. And then the knee, the right knee, bend, bounce, bounce. Bounce, straighten fully, squeeze the muscles above the knee. Bounce, 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 fully straighten.
Don't worry if there's a few creaks. <laughs> That's just life. If there's pain, don't go into the pain. Just go into the edge of it. Other knee, left knee. The beauty of this one is you're working on mobility and stability and alignment and stimulating blood flow into the meniscus, which doesn't have its own independent blood supply, like the discs. So we need to stimulate blood flow by moving more because the heart also doesn't work as well. The blood vessels are thicker as we get uh, constricted as we get older, all the bad news. The good news is keep stimulating blood flow. Like that's what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to do hips together like this, out and together. So hip circles. I like to add on squeeze my inner thighs, contract, stretch inner thighs because that will stimulate the blood flow gently a bit more in the pelvic area and towards the, the head as well. We'll, we'll pull, help the heart and the arteries with the stretching, but then the contraction will push the blood flow away from the muscles towards the heart. So we're really stimulating that blood flow. So both directions, so swap that direction if you haven't already. Okay, we're gonna go into windscreen wiper and um, just relax the arms. Let's just do the hips and have your feet. Let's start with about hip width for the knee towards opposite foot. So right knee towards left foot, left knee towards right foot, no force. You can add on neck rotation. So you look away from your kneecaps. You can add, you can add on arms. It's an option if you are familiar with these exercises. Okay, now we're going to try feet wider than hip width and we'll, we'll do arms going across. Maybe your knees are going closer to the floor into that deeper internal rotation that gets really stiff as we get older. Okay, we're gonna go into feet and knees together, elbows clasped, and this is really good to loosen up the lower back. So just slowly as well, because the lower back is quite strong. So your knees one way, knees the other way with the feet and knees together. So preventing getting a stiff back or loosening up a back that is stiff. I do get a buzz out of thinking, I really enjoy the YouTube actually because it's just fun and it's so, it's so nice to think that this, what we're all doing right now you know, somebody in the world that might not be able to afford yoga classes or doesn't, doesn't want to go to yoga, you know, for free they can be doing this, what we're doing, and feeling good, <laughs> making their body feel better. It's, it's really cool. Okay, everyone, finishing up that one. And we're going to hug our knees in again. And if you don't know Egg Beta, have a quick look at... If you're not very coordinated, don't worry. Back reverse. You don't have to be coordinated. Reverse. If you're not very good at it, you're still moving in a different way. Reverse. And the main thing is you're just moving. You're moving your body. Stimulating blood flow. Okay, great, great, great. I'm going to come around to all fours now. And hands and feet a bit wider than hip widths. And see what I'm doing here, just circling one way. Hopefully my arm's not rubbing, rubbing on the microphone. I'm trying not to make that noise 
when your arm rubs on the microphone. And then back the other way. So feeling your hips, your shoulders, your wrist joints here. And then we'll go ordinary all fours, about shoulder width and hip width. And we'll do toes tucked under, sit back, round out a bit, curl the tailbone, look towards your belly button. And then untuck the toes, arch your spine, look forward, inhale, we can add on the breath. Exhale, tuck the toes under, sit back, a variation of cat cow. Inhale, if you're, if you're new to this, you should just probably just look at it first. And once again, if you're not very coordinated, it, it is good to go to a yoga class, but just go gently, see how your body feels. You can't go wrong, really, if you're not forcing your body. You don't, it doesn't matter if you're not doing it perfectly in the right way. We'll do ordinary cat cow. You just stay in all fours. Inhale, exhale, turn the shoulders in. Don't worry about that, beginners. Turn the shoulders out. If you've done a lot of yoga, you can add on toes tucked under as well. Turn the shoulders in. Squeeze the belly. Untuck the toes. Lengthen the belly. Turn the shoulders out. Eyes lifting as well. Okay, now if you're on the hard floor, you might want a um, folded towel or blanket or cushion under your knee. I'll just have my batch here for a moment to coordinate right and left. So we're going to have the right leg out like that. And then I'll just have my back to you to start with. So you go into this exhale and then inhale. It's like a side lunge. Exhale. Inhale. I'll just do it from the... Um, like that, exhale. Trying to get stretch the groins and the lats. So make sure the legs out to the side because I see beginners so have to sort of have the leg there. We're not doing the ordinary lunge, we're doing side lunge. And you could do inhale here or exhale. It wouldn't really matter whether you're doing inhale, exhale, exhale, inhale. With it works either way. Sort of sink into it a bit. Don't overstretch. Okay, now we're going to hold the gate pose like this. So if you're a bit stiffer, it might look a bit like that. If you're more flexible, your legs are a bit straighter and your upper arms closer to your ear. You're trying to look up. Don't force anything. If it hurts your shoulder, you can just have hand on the hip. Final few breaths. A little bit more stretch. Get really stiff in this area. Final exhalation. Okay, and then switch on your core to come out. And then we're swapping over. So you have, this will be your left leg now. You go like this. And I like to do inhale here and exhale, but you could do, you could do exhale, inhale. Just make it feel good. I do see a lot of people don't coordinate this so well in a yoga class, uh, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're moving in a different way. You're stimulating that blood flow in a nice, gentle way. We can't run around all day and walk all day, but we can stimulate movement after we're sitting for an hour, break up the day, you have more energy, you have more long health and longevity. Not letting things get stagnant. Blood flow, lymph. Okay, we're holding gate pose. You are trying to turn your chest up. Try to relax into it as much as you can. 
wriggle the fingers a bit. One more breath. Make sure your core switch on a bit to lift out of that one. And back to cat cow. Or you might feel like up dog, down dog. So you know cat cow, inhale, exhale. But you could do up dog, down dog, if you feel like that. And you know your yoga. And it's okay for your wrists. Try to untuck the toes, tuck under the toes. So the tops of the feet down for the inhale. And then plantar flexion and dorsiflexion in the ankle joints. Whether you're doing the, that one or the up dog, down dog. Okay, now we're coming back to, we're going to have the right leg, I'll have my back to you for a moment. Um, I'll show you from the side on, have your right foot forward and you're trying to bend straight. You might need something under that left knee, some towel or some padding. This is thick carpet, so it's okay. And you could do undoing exhale. Inhale, but it really wouldn't matter. So the right knee bending and straightening, careful of the left hip. Kind of add on arms like this. Elbows forward, elbows back, elbows forward, elbows back. Eyes steady, my eyes were down a bit. Keep doing the same foot. We haven't swapped yet. I'm just facing front on. I can see you guys on Zoom, but <laughs> it really annoys me how yoga teachers say, so you can see me, <laughs> so I can see you. They say, I hear yoga YouTubers say, so I can see you. I'm like, no, they can't. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> okay. And then we're holding in the lunge with, so that like this, with a posterior tilt, hands in prayer maybe, or hands on hips, or reach your arms up a bit, maybe even look up, don't overstretch there. Careful of your lower back too. Try to be relaxed in that neck. Squeeze the left glutes a bit, stretch the front of the left hip. And final inhalation. Okay, and exhale, so you might keep, see I've got that knee bent. And if you have two blocks, it works quite well for this stretch too. But you're working towards straightening out and not hunching too much, keeping a bit of lift out of your chest. So holding this stretch, the back of the right hip. Be careful of forcing. And if you just push the foot down a bit and drag the foot back without it moving, Gently engaging the hamstrings as well as stretching. Keep that lift out of the belly button. Breathing into your body. And then one more breath in and out in this stretch. And then coming and breaking it up a bit. Hold down dog or hold kneeling, stretching forward. But you will notice your right, let's do both. If you can, knee or first. You'll notice the right leg feels a bit different because the hamstrings has had that stretch and the front of the left hip had a stretch. The back of the right leg, the front of the left hip. And then downward dog. So you might even sense the feeling of the blood flow is more on the back of the right leg and the front of the left hip because that's What's, what happens when you stretch. So this time the left foot will be forward. Make sure you unmute yourself and correct me if I make a mistake. <laughs> Save me having to edit or anything. <laughs> Just 
careful of that right knee, that right groin, not overstretching. Relax shoulders. You can add on a bit of movement in the arms if you like. Shoulder blades apart, shoulder blades together. Keep that, that gaze horizontal, maybe even not always looking at the screen. When you know what you're doing, orient your body, orientate your body towards the sky, a plant. And, and Julie, <laughs> the ocean, <laughs> lucky Julie. <laughs> maybe, some, maybe some of you have a view over the fields. I've got the forest. But even just your backyard, a beautiful plant, <laughs> it's nature. Okay, we're going to hold this one now. So, and the sky. So you see a bit of sky out the window? You could live in an apartment in a busy city. It's always there and it's beautiful. Okay, so going to come into holding this stretch, posterior tilt, and your arms might be here or here. Doesn't really matter. We're all doing what's right for our body. So no overstretching. One more breath. And then coming to kneeling. You can unmute yourself if you need to ask a question. We need to do the stretch of the Achilles. Oh, yep. Thank you, everybody. I forgot. <laughs> I can edit out that little bit, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Trudy. So I forgot something there. Come back to the left foot forward. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so we held this one and then we're coming into the hamstring stretch. You might use two blocks here or some of you have your knee bent. Most people, my knee's bent and I'm pretty flexible because I'm a yoga teacher. So it's not about how flexible you are really, it's about Stimulating blood flow, feeling your best for wherever you're at. Trying to, yeah, just feel good. One more breath in this stretch. Okay, and then back to the kneeling. Try to sit back to your heels and stretch forward. Okay, coming to kneeling. If you can, just just kneel. But if you, if it's uncomfortable, you can you could stand on your knees. You could. Put a pillow behind your knees. You could sit in a chair. So have your arms out here like this, 90-90. And then both turning in, but not like that. Just keep the elbows quite straight and the shoulders down and the reach of the crown. Just stabilize a little bit into the shoulder blades and lower ribs. And then externally rotate. Internally rotate. It's actually not a huge range. If you've got nice stability, a good, a good balance of stability and mobility. You don't want to be hypermobile. You don't want to be too, too stiff either. So we're, basically we're working on both here. And if you have a stiffer side like I do, you might just do that on its own a bit more, just a bit more oiling up. But you can just do both together. And the alternating is good too. So one's turning out, one's turning in. If you're going a bit too much into your neck, just have a break. If you can keep your neck upper trapezius relaxed, you can do a little bit more. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to this one. So you try to basically inhale, exhale, elbows together and lifting. So your hands are like a book, opening the open book. Inhale, so you're not arching into your back. You're just trying to feel into the shoulder blades, pull in the chest lifting and you're externally rotating. So it's a great, simple, but quite strong exercise for taking roundness out of the shoulders or preventing roundness. It's quite strong. Okay, the next one is we're trying to turn the shoulders in and out with the arms behind you, in, out. And then see if you can go in and get the fingertips together and maybe the palms of the hands turn, and you're trying to turn the shoulders out and you might do a little toe stretch just sitting back a bit but being careful to don't over stretch into your toes and then maybe take that gaze we'll just hold here for a moment take that gaze out into a distant spot on nature. It's good for your eyes and your brain not to always be too much looking at you know, indoors and screens. Okay, so the next one is we've been lying, we're lying on our back and I just want you to have a look at what I'm doing. See how my right leg's up? And going internal, external, in like this. Just trying to get the thigh turning in and out. So you're trying to keep the thigh quite vertical. And then bring it into that abductor stretch. So you're trying to see, bring that, that left knee, that left leg holding a little bit and your arms can help and just rocking, rocking, right foot towards left shoulder. And then hold the stretch, not rocking, just hold gently. Don't force, but you can pull a little bit. Final exhalation, next exhalation. Going to straighten and bend and bounce. And then the left knee just doing this. And then into that abductor stretch like this and rocking. And then just hold, deep breathing into your belly, mainly in and out to the nose, five counts in, five counts out. It's a really good rhythm for the nervous system, which goes into immune system, digestive system, sleep cycle, feeling good. One more breath in and out. A little bit of a straighten, bend and bounce. Okay, see how my soles of the feet together? And try to reach your arms up to get more shoulder opening. You can do a little bit of a rock from side to side in Supta Baddha Konasana. If it's too strong in your shoulders, just have your elbows bent a bit. If you're a bit more flexible there, straighter arms. Um, another option, if you have a bolster or a block, because we're about to hold, you might put like this, a bolster or a block under your sacrum. And it might feel good for you to do it like that. And just, just holding here. Just 
Just check your face could always be a bit softer. Just give yourself permission. Let go. Say to yourself, you have permission. A deeper part of yourself. Let go. In the eyes and the face. The whole body. Deeper letting go. Things you have or haven't achieved. Worrying about things you don't have control over. Stuff that's happened that you don't have control over. One more breath in and out here. Okay, roll to your right side. Sitting up with your legs crossed and your right leg in front. Circling one way. The other way. Just jiggle a little bit around your knees and hips. Trying to, as we get older, rather than going in this direction, Going in this direction <laughs> and then holding, stretching forward. So some of you might hold like that would be perfect. And, but some, I mean, some people have their head on the floor, but most people are a bit stiff. Nothing wrong with that. One more breath in and out here. Make sure you grip your core a little bit if you're right forward because your lower back's stretched. Remember when you've stretched, the muscle tone is a bit lower. Straighten out your legs. Point flex, bend and straighten. Left leg in front, sitting cross-legged. Turning one way, circling, feeling your lower back, your hips. Back the other direction. Jiggle a little, jiggle a little bit around your hips. Just asking your body, telling your body you're clear in your intention. We're trying not to go in this direction, We're trying to keep our body more open and our mind and enjoying our life more, enjoying where we're at right now. Don't hunch too much, keep a bit of lift out of the chest, belly button. Crown. One more breath in and out. Make sure you grip your core to lift out of that. Straighten out your legs, point flex, point flex, curl the toes spread, bend the knees, straighten, bend, straighten. Okay, we're going to sit for a little bit, do a couple of eye exercises, 
Then we'll put our legs up the wall. I'm going to sit on my block. You can also sit on a chair. You can sit against the wall. Try to have a straight back. Try not to always have the same foot in front. Bolster, pillow. Some people can sit comfortably on their bottom, but most people, the prop helps to get that length through the spine and to be relaxed around the spine. And you might find that gaze, which is you're looking straight ahead and it's just a, a flower or a branch or a cloud, or but it's straight ahead and it can be as, it's got to be at least a couple of metres. I mean, it could be kilometres, but it's straight ahead and it's quite far away. It's not right close to you. It could be the other side of the room or it could be a cloud, but make sure you're looking up and your, head, your gaze is steady, straight ahead. Eyes, and then we'll look, without turning our head, just look to the right. Straight, look to the left. Straight, right, straight, left, straight, right, straight, left, straight. Close your eyes. Open your eyes, straight, up, straight, down, straight, up, straight, down, straight, up, straight, down, straight. Close your eyes. Open your eyes, relaxed as you can be. Upright, straight, down left, straight, up left, straight, down right, straight, up right, straight, down left, straight. Oh, <laughs> that was hard. Up left, straight, down right, straight, up right, straight, down left, straight, up left. Straight, down right, straight, close your eyes. Hmm. Straight, up, like a clock, one way, the other way. One way, the other way. And again. Straight. Hmm. Okay, to put the thumb out and look at that, that spot that's further away. Straight, thumb, which is still straight, but it's closer. Straight, thumb. Straight, thumb. Straight, thumb. Bring the thumb in as close as you can until you lose your focus. And then further away. And then straight. Close your eyes. Relax. You've actually accessed different parts of your brain there as well. Okay, we're going to rub our hands together, get a bit of heat, which is easy because it's hot here in summer in WA, but some of you, sometimes in winter you can't get any, but don't worry. And then palm your eyes, just bring your knees up. You have your eyes gently open or closed. Consciously relax around your eyes. Connect into the brain. So your eyeballs are an extension of the brain. Central nervous system. So you can energise and calm the brain with the eyeball exercises. So make sure you relax as you can be through your whole body. Okay, if you have an eye pillow, that would be great too for legs up the wall. So, and I'm going to use my prop to get a bit more inversion. So you can go into side on, 
put a pillow or a bolster or a block behind your back in the right place that just feels really comfortable. And you might close your eyes down, you might put something over your eyes, which is really nice. Try to get the weight equal on the right and left. Could you relax a bit more? Jaw, tongue, throat, shoulders and neck. Just feel the belly, the diaphragm muscle working a tiny bit harder when you inhale against the weight of the abdominal organs. And then the, the heavy abdominal organs helping with the exhale. And the exhale is coming more easily. And there's a calming effect on the nervous system. So stimulating into calming down into the parasympathetic rest, digest, repair, heal, rejuvenate restore, balance, reset and most of the time we should be quite relaxed and sometimes a little bit of stress in life is normal. The problem is in the modern world we're most of the time a little bit stressed and sometimes relaxed but it should be the opposite. So you might need to reset your nervous system. You know, not just once a day or once a week at a yoga class, little bits throughout the day. Breath, posture, eyes, gratitude, focusing on the present. Okay, so we've got just a few more minutes, you can stay here or you can just lie on your back or you can just sit. So just saying to your body, you care, feeling into your whole body from the, the toes up through the feet through the knees, scanning up through the hips, your pelvic floor, feeling your belly, diaphragm, chest, your arms, up through your neck, your head, brain, crown of the head, whole body, and all your cells, thank you for your care, attention, commitment, discipline, self-care is health care, allow a positive feeling. And if you need to stay for longer, of course, um, that's always fine, as you know. But if, if you feel that's enough, because 60 minutes is a lot of time to spend on your body, bring your knees in and roll to the side. So thank you, my real life students here. And thank you, whoever you are out there on YouTube. <laughs> I meant to say, please subscribe, but you really get sick of that. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Enjoy your night or your day.